A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I am Silver! Fire! The two men, their faces hidden by gaudy bandanas, had held up the bank in Dodgeville and escaped into the hills. That evening, Sheriff McDonald told the clamoring crowd... They won't get away. They've got to be close by. All we know is they were dressed like dudes and wore the brightest bandanas ever made. Now then, we've got to find these crooks and the cash is stolen. The manhunt got underway at once. The sheriff's men rode far and wide, little suspecting that the thieves had doubled back to Dodgeville with their loot. They were among the crowd that night when a crowd gathered to listen to Obadiah Jenkins. And this famous old Indian looked at me with tears in his eyes as he lay dying. He told me that I'd saved his whole nation. So the chief repaid me by giving... Jenkins was a lovable old rogue who had traveled the West for many years peddling his cure-all. He stood on a torch-lit platform in the center of a clearing at the edge of town. Now, my friends, before I introduce my famous Jenkins Indian Urban Recure, before I introduce you to my liquid jump-up, I'll prove what I said is true by introducing the chief's daughter. Here she is, princess eyes like a lovely fawn. But me, I call her Ruth. The princess is going to entertain you with tribal chants and a little soft. As Obadiah Jenkins continued his florid introduction of the lovely Ruth from the platform he directed the roadside, two figures left the medicine wagon drawn up in a dark grove nearby. They were Maul Conrad and Joe Russell, the bank robbers. Let's get good under the bags. Now let's sneak into the crowd and get into town with them. They don't know us there, not in these clothes. What happened to that other bandana? I don't know. Must be in the pocket of one of the suits. But never mind that. Let's get out of here. I hate leaving that much money in that wagon overnight. The wagon will be here two days. The money's safer there than it'll be in the woods the way that posse's searching. <laughs> The 
The two bank robbers would have worried about the safety of their loot had they seen Obie Jenkins' medicine wagon next morning. It was creaking along the road miles from the spot where it was to have remained for two days. Ruthie, shall we stop our chariot near Jan Boskidel and seek water to slake our maddening thirst? Or shall we... Buttercup, you're crying. No. Well, doggone. Hold you, Cephalus. Hold. Well, what is it, Ruthie Pet? Nothing. Here, here, let me wipe those tears away. Father O.B., don't. Please. And please don't use that awful-looking bandana. <laughs> you don't like this beautiful hunk of material? No. I kind of admire it myself. Found it last night near the wagon. One of the yokels must have dropped it. Oh. Now, see here, Ruthie, you got to tell me. What is it? Ruth cried and refused to talk at first, but finally she told him. When she had finished telling him, Obi was flabbergasted at what he had heard. Oh, doggone it, Ruthie. I didn't realize you weren't happy or that you were ashamed of the way we live. I'm sorry. But you say, baby, you want to go to school, a good school like other girls. Yes. And come back and teach the Indian children? Yes, that, that's what I want to do, Father Obi. Then, by golly, that's what you're going to do. Oh. I'm not sure how, but you're going to... Oh. When we get to Frontier Town, I'll leave you at Ma Willie's boarding house so he can start studying right away. Meanwhile, well, I'll figure something. Now, baby, you stay here a minute. I'm going down and find me a stream with some water. Thank you, Father Obi. Thank you. Oh, what a lying faker you are, Obi Jenkins. Going to send her to school, are you? How? Did you ever make a real honest dollar in your life? Well, yes, there was that time. Uh, no, I guess you couldn't count on that. See, you never did. Of course, you could marry that widow in Carson City, and uh, well, but that wouldn't be honest either. Got to keep this on the up and up, because it's for Ruthie, that's why. Now, let's see. Hmm. You could look for gold someplace. It's one way. Then if you found it, you'd have to bend over for it, and your back's not in good condition. As Obi walked along, muttering and debating with himself, he walked into a clearing. And there before his unbelieving eyes was the answer to all his troubles. Two men, a masked man and an Indian, crooks without a doubt, with rewards on their heads. Big rewards, maybe. That was it. That's who they were. Doggone. The two that held up the bank in Dodgeville. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were occupied, and Obi realized his great chance. He accepted his role, a pawn of faith about to become a hero. Without hesitation, he put his hand into his pocket, pulled out the strange-looking miniature pistol he carried there, and went into action. Reach for the sky, you varmints! Your game is up! You must have What this? <laughs> What game are you talking about? Aha! Cool ones, aren't you? I said reach for the sky! <laughs> well, that's a tall order. I don't think we will. Huh? But you gotta. I've got my gun on you. You call that a gun? Here, give it to me. No, you don't! Doggone you! Give me back my gun! <laughs> Here, Toto, you take it. Ah, Kimasabi, this baby pistol. <laughs> What's the idea of the scene, friend? <laughs> this mask? There's a reason why I wear that. I know the reason. You two robbed the bank in Dodgeville yesterday. Oh, him think we robbed bank. <laughs> that, that funny. It wouldn't be funny just now if I'd been carrying my 44. I would have taken you like that. Then I'd get the reward and, uh, well, what's the use? But we didn't rob the bank, so it would have done you no good. Are you a one-man posse? I'm a one-man bust. Poor little Ruthie. Oh, who's Ruthie? My sweet little Indian daughter, that's who. Now, doggone, don't laugh. Don't know why I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. But life's got me talking to myself lately. And I need a better audience. Oh? You've got to tell somebody, so listen. The Lone Ranger and Tonto listened as Obi related the story of Ruth and himself. You see, when her mother died... Her father, he was an Indian, too. Well, he came along with me, helping me sell my herb and root cure. He used to drink it himself. I think that's what killed him. Anyway, he up and died in the summer morning two years later. So there I was with a sweet little papoose. 
Obie's words were occasionally more humorous than tragic. Yet there was something pathetic in his tale and in his plight over Ruth. The Lone Ranger heard his story to the end. So he can see why I got a helper, doggone it. Yes, but I think your chances might be better if you remained in Frontier Town and went to work. Oh. Instead of searching for bank robbers with a slingshot. Well, maybe you're right about that last part. And the first part, too. Well, could be. Depends on your definition of work. There might be something in Frontier Town that could do with one of my many talents. I've got friends there. Sheriff Taylor, for instance. Know him so well, he won't play cards with me. And me and Judge Brennan used to be close in rock and ride during the cold spell. Of course, that was in the old days when the judge was dispensing justice with a water chaser. Trouble is, Taylor and Brennan might agree with you on that work anger and... Well, doggone, imagine that. The two of them up and walk out on me. Better get on to Frontier Town, Jenkins. Come on, Phil, get up. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode off from the talkative Obi, who, as they rode away, could be seen trudging back to his wagon. The masked man and his Indian companion were heading toward Frontier Town also, but there had been no reason to tell Obadiah Jenkins this. Jenkins is a likable sort of charlatan, Tonto, but his feeling for that daughter of his is sincere. Sound like her fine girl. Her one teach Indian children. Isn't that good? Yes, it's a wonderful ambition, Tonto. I need it so badly. Maybe while we're in the vicinity of Frontier Town, we'll learn what Jenkins may be doing to help her. Hold oh, it, Get him up, Scout. And Obi, back with Ruth and starting off again in his ancient wagon, began to form new ideas of how he could help here. Get a few cephalus. Yes, Ruthie, the masked man gave me an idea. Work, that's what he said. First time I ever heard the word without shivering. Before we go to that extreme, though, I think maybe we'll try the things we know. I haven't played poker in a long time. Obi arrived in Frontier Town that evening and turned Ruth over to Ma Willard. The woman and the girl took to each other on sight. Obi, not waiting to pay his respects to Judge Brennan, went down to the Silver Dollar Cafe to look up old friends. It was hours later when Obi, deep in a poker game, looked up and saw Sheriff Taylor and one of his deputies eyeing him from the door. There was a strange light in the eyes of the sheriff as he came toward the table. Huh. Sheriff Taylor and a deputy... Stars sure are coming out early tonight, aren't they? <laughs> oh, Obi. Better throw in your cards. Hi, Sheriff. What do you mean, throw in my cards? Just what I say. You're under arrest. In his office, Sheriff Taylor handed the surprised Obi a piece of printed paper. Read that. Oh, what's this? Let's see. Hmm. A yellow bandana with green border, purple polka dots, and a diagonal slash of red. <laughs> my doggone, that's the one I'm wearing in my coat pocket. I know that, Obi. My deputy spotted it on you. That's why you're under arrest. That's one of the bandanas worn by the men who robbed the bank at Dodgeville yesterday. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Obadiah Jenkins was in the jailhouse, and his plight was known to everyone in Frontier Town, it seemed. That is how Maul Conrad and Joe Russell, the bandits, learned where their quarry might be found. You figured right, Russ. He's in town all right. Wonder why he's in the who's though. Yeah, we better get out. They found the money, that's why. Well, maybe not. We can't run. Guys like Jenkins go to the who's all the time. Yeah, but where does that leave us? Looking for the wagon or waiting to see what's going on. Let's find out which before we do anything. When the Lone Ranger heard from Tonto that Obi Jenkins had been arrested, he went into Frontier Town at once. His earlier concern for the man prompted this. Sheriff Taylor, always surprised when the mysterious masked man appeared on the scene, reacted once more as he always did. Loath to give information when the Lone Ranger entered his office by a back door, he soon found himself giving sympathetic ear to Obi's plea, but it was to the masked man that Obi addressed most of his words. And don't know what you're doing here, stranger, but if you got more sense than this sheriff, you're welcome. Now, do I impress you as a kind of oaf who'd leave $100,000 in the wagon? A smart crook might do just that. Well, if I was a crook, and I'm not, I wouldn't be that smart. And I'm not that dumb that I'd go around wearing my bandana like a badge. I thought it was going to identify me as a robber. You admit you wanted money to send your foster daughter to school, don't you? Sure, and I still want it. The masked man here can tell you when I first wanted it. That's when I tried to hold him for the same robbery you're holding me. That's right, Sheriff. Jenkins, I want you to tell me the truth for your daughter's sake. Were you mixed up in the robbery in any way? <laughs> that too, Brute? Ah, what's the use? Of course I wasn't. Take me to the... Hey, now where are you going? Sheriff, I'd like to speak with you alone over here. Sheriff, I think this man is innocent. And if it's possible, I'm going to prove it. I'll have Tonto get Judge Brennan. I want you to join him. I'll be waiting for you at my camp and the three of us can... Well, Hours later, in Ma Willard's boarding house, Judge Brennan, Sheriff Taylor, and the Lone Ranger were nearing the end of a long and trying discussion. Judge, Obey's not the type to rob a bank, and you must admit the facts. Yeah, the facts will come out in court. I'll admit to nothing but the evidence, and I'll lay off me. Judge, I arrested him, and in spite of the evidence I uncovered, I'd swear he isn't guilty. I think we all feel the same way. Hey, look, leave me out of this and do your swearing together. We're not asking you to subvert the law, Judge Brennan. What we suggest is legal. Show me the book and chapter. <laughs> all right, all right, we can't. But what we suggest might ensure justice. And if Obi proves to be guilty later, I promise you he won't escape. So do I. The important thing is, we have the money. We found it in Obi's wagon. And we'll return it to the bank regardless of what happens. You know, in the old days, they used to think law was a matter of common sense. Lately, I've got to thinking it's more a matter of evidence. Yeah, maybe I could revert for a couple of days... All right, come on, slip me that reason again why I should do what I do. I claim the real crooks are at large, and that they hid the money and clothes in Obi's wagon. Now, if Obi is held for this robbery tomorrow, they'll know we have the money and they'll leave town. If they think the money is still in the wagon, they might make an attempt to get it back. Courthouse in Frontier Town was crowded next morning when Obadiah Jenkins, flanked by Sheriff Taylor and a deputy, came before Judge Brennan. Next case, the people versus Obadiah Jenkins, Your Honor. All right, now, Mr. Prosecutor, what have we here? Your Honor, if it pleases the court... It always pleases the court. You see those papers you have there, Mr. Prosecutor? Your Honor. My Honor has nothing to do with it. Let's see the papers. Uh, yes, sir. Obadiah Jenkins. Your Honor, what's the matter? Trial is not within jurisdiction of this court. Case dismissed. But, Your Honor... That's my ruling. Case dismissed. Now, the prisoner is known to our court. That's me. He's known as an undesirable. Now, look here, Judge Brennan. The defendant will shut his trap. The court, in dismissing the case, gives the defendant ten minutes to repossess all his belongings and shirt tail out of town. I never heard of such a thing in my life. Meanwhile, Quiet! Meanwhile, the court, that's me, desires to see the prosecuting attorney, Sheriff Taylor, Sheriff McDonald, and their deputies in this chambers at once. Don't answer back, any of you. 
You heard me. That's my ruling. Oh, yeah, I never heard of Furthermore, the court orders that all spectators glue in their seats till the defendant now dismissed gets his carcass out of this courthouse. Yeah, bailiff. Yes, Your Honor. See if the order's obeyed. Adios. Court's adjourned. <laughs> Ten minutes later, the two crooks, Maul Conrad and Joe Russell, watched from the edge of town as Obadiah Jenkins and his rickety wagon creaked onto the Overland Trail. There he goes, Russ. We go after him right away? Uh, wait till he gets out of town. His horse of his is near dead. Give him a few miles, then we'll take after him. Citizens of Frontier Town were aroused by Judge Brennan's decision and subsequent actions. A spontaneous indignation meeting had taken place, and as it neared its climax, Milo Phillips, the editor of the Southwest Bugle and now presiding, looked up. And now that Obie Jenkins has escaped, he is Sheriff McDonald of Dodgeville, just being released from Judge Brennan's chamber after more than an hour. Hey, hey, tell us what happened, will you, Sheriff? Yeah, come on. Hey, it looks bad, don't he? I'll be pleased because I'm too angry to talk much. All I can tell you is this. Judge Brennan freed the man who helped rob our bank in Dodgeville. Then purposely kept us from going after him. You mean Jenkins has escaped with the money? Well, uh, no. Judge Brennan's got it. He's turned it over to the bank. He says he let Jenkins go because he wanted to see justice done. Hear that? Justice done. The only justice we'll get around here is when Brennan is fired. Yeah, yeah fine justice. When a judge parades his contempt for the law and the citizenry... Where's Sheriff Taylor McDonald? Well, he went out the back way. He rode off somewhere. Never mind the talk. Let's get after Judge Brennan. Yeah, yeah. the courthouse. Right, running out of town on a rail. Let's get his The series of bewildering events during the past three days had left Obadiah Jenkins mentally numb. As he rode along the trail miles out of frontier town, only two thoughts were in his mind. Judge Brennan had freed him, but in freeing him, he had sent Obi off without permitting him to see his beloved Ruthie. Engrossed in his thoughts of the daughter he had left behind, Obi paid no heed to the sound of the horses overtaking him until they thundered up in front of the trudging Giuseppe. Ho, 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 Never mind, I see it is. Ah, the final act of my tragedy. What are you talking about? Get down off that wagon. I'll get down. Steady there. If you want to swap your horse for this museum piece, you... Hey, what are you doing climbing inside there? Uh, you wouldn't know, you old goat. Uh, your partner hasn't much respect for age, has he? Shut up. Keep away from that wagon. You wouldn't be looking for $100,000, some dude clothes, and a couple of bandanas, would you? What'd you say? Hey, Maul, you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. You found that money, where is it? I don't know where it is Now say, keep your hands off my person Or you what? You don't want another bang in the face, tell us Where'd you put the money? Nowhere, they took it Who, who took it? Yeah, here, maybe this will help them remember A gun make me remember? Guns cause forgetting Don't be smart, if you don't tell me where that money is I'll shoot you down No, oh, my arm A masked man, an Indian, I'll get him both No, oh, 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 oh. You're the two we're after, huh? Get up off the ground and get into that wagon. Where in heaven did you come from? You couldn't have come from anywhere else. You hear order. Get in wagon. You too, Obi. We're going back to Frontier Town. You'll save time if you carry Bucephalus. Back in the courthouse, Judge Brennan, his chin and mouth set firmly, listened to Editor Milo Phillips conclude his speech. And Judge Brennan, we demand your resignation. Well, I guess what you people saw and heard here today does seem bad to you. Bad's not the word. Rotten is. Why you resign? Uh, I wish this was my old court. You'd get conked with a bung starter. I'm sorry, folks. You're mad and want me to resign. But when you got me here, you knew my decisions didn't come from books. 
Folks haven't started to catch up yet with what happens out here. Every decision I've handed down has been according to my version of justice. You're begging the fact, yes? Phillips, I'm not begging anything, not even your pardon for what happened today. Don't listen to him, man. Ride him out on the rail. We'll show our version of justice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you people have been talking and yelling like Comanches. Phillips here's been going on like a lawyer. Worst thing that can be said about a newspaper man. Now, if you'd make up your mind... Hey, to... here comes Sheriff Taylor with Jenkins and two other fellas. A masked man on an engine. Clear the way, everyone. That's Sheriff Taylor up there next to the judge. He has something important to tell you. A masked man, what's he doing here? That's the sheriff, boy. What is it, Sheriff? All of you, look outside. Sheriff McDonald has the men who robbed the bank in Dodgeville. What's this? What's more... They're wanted for murder and bank robbery in Texas, too. Got posters on it yesterday. Was Jenkins in with them? Of course not. He didn't even know about them. They hid the loot in his wagon when they were being chased in Dodgeville. They followed him here to recover it. It was the masked man's idea to set Jenkins free so the crooks would follow him. And they did. Well, that, that explains everything. Uh, we all apologize, Judge Bennett. He... It was a brilliant plan. Well, never mind that. Just tell me one thing. Is there any reward money? Yes, 10000 I uh, suppose that means the masked man deserves part of it. Yeah, not by a jughead. Reward goes to Obadiah Jenkins. Obie to you folks. Goes to him so he can send his daughter to a good school. That's my ruling. Anyone want to argue the point? Yes, it is. What about the masked man? It was his idea. <laughs> Uh, he wouldn't take it. He's the Lone Ranger. is a George W. Trendle production directed by Charles D. Livingston, edited by Fran Stryker, and the part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh-huh.